okay theory of nodal evolution then selection and drift genetic drift right so you must be knowing some basics about these things right genetic drift versus natural selection so natural selection is uh, a hallmark hypothesis of charles darwin right then uh, drift of course there are so many people behind this drift especially geneticist of the uh, 20th century and then neutral evolution is a concept by mostly by japanese geneticist ota and kimura okay so these are the people behind it uh, you know the evolutionary pattern is quite deterministic in a darwinian mode deterministic means it's going from uh, today to tomorrow after 1 million years what is going to be so it's a uh, directional towards fitness so fit alleles are always selected and non fit alleles are removed from a population is that clear to you so that is what you call the deterministic pattern of the evolution okay so basically you know we have seen that in our last class two types of mutations one is called synonymous and another one is non synonymous right of course non synonymous is the amino acid changing while synonymous is amino acid is preserving same amino acid so this has something to do with the degeneracy of the uh, triplet codon right so few codons are coding though it is differing in mostly in the third position or in the second position uh, you know different codes are coding for the same amino acid so mutations on third codon most of often uh, do not result in change in amino acid so those sort of mutations are what you call it as synonymous while on the first position if something changes on the first position of the codon it changes the amino acid that is what you call non synonymous right so non synonymous mutations are fixed in a population uh, in a process called natural selection so normally if you observe in a population a random population in a dna sequence of course a coding dna sequence if you say this synonymous and non synonymous it has to be coding that it has to be genes if it is intron there is no point in saying it's uh, synonymous non because that makes no sense there is no uh, translation of those intronic or you know in between gene whatever the intergenic sequences okay because most majority of the dna of our genome or any of this prokaryote or eukaryote it is non coding it's all intron okay 95 percentage only very few genes are there and this discussion is about those genes right now non synonymous mutations are fixed in a population through natural selection fix fixation of these alleles in a population over time you know that is what this evolution is all about or molecular evolution is about right some mutations are fixed you know you see that graph of it right so over the time so allele frequency approaches 1 so if it approaches 1 means that mutations are fixed in a population or polymorphism is maintained in a population that in our last class we were saying about what uh, hemoglobin right so uh, uh, some mutations of this hemoglobin hbs gene that result in sickle cell anemia that is maintained the polymorphism is maintained by something called balancing selection and again that is a, an example of deterministic evolutionary pattern okay so it depends solely upon the reproductive fitness of the variants so though some variants have this sort of uh, uh, you know synonymous or uh, non synonymous mutations while these individuals are not reproductively capable that do not translate anything to the evolutionary form so it all depends upon fraction of fertile individuals in a population okay that are re that are producing the offsprings so it has to be uh, you know transmitted to the next filial otherwise any kinds of mutations have no evolutionary significance so that is what you call effective population size so effective population size is not just normal population size but number of fertile individuals of a population because only that matters in uh, evolutionary context okay not the entire population matters here right so you know it, in the natural selection random mutations result in genetic variations right so that is that is a playground of this natural selections to happen so in the population there are variants and the, these variants are not created for the selection of course not variants are there already okay and this natural selection acts on or sees on this variants to select the best one and to remove the worst one 
so the two forms selection of the best alleles that you call positive selection okay and removal of bad alleles okay that is called purifying selection or negative selection okay the two kinds of selection there so random or stochastic mutation of course mutations are random okay so that stochastic mutations result in genetic variation so genetic variations are resultant of mutations uh, which are random uh, of course rediscovered hugo devries discovered in 20th century of the uh, you know works of seminal works of grigor mendel in uh, uh, you know 19th century right so acts on dominant acts as the dominant force in evolution so the, the dominant force here it is the uh, natural selection acting upon stochastic mutations pre-existing stochastic mutations of the populations okay it is not pre-existing forever of course these are generated by mutations okay so that is what right genetic variations are resultant of the mutations and the mutations can be advantageous right subjected to positive selection pressure ultimately get fixed so those mutations which are conferring some uh, fitness of those population those are ultimately preserved and uh, the frequency of those alleles becomes one that you call fixation of those alleles okay now disadvantageous mutations are eliminated so if those alleles are disadvantageous right do not confer any uh, evolution advantage so these are immediately removed from that population okay so neutral mutations result in polymorphism so neutral mutation do not say these are uh, neutral theory of evolution that has got no meaning okay so some mutations which are neutral neither positive nor negative these are simply maintenance of those mutations in a population and what you call it as results in polymorphism or balancing selection okay now if these are some broad types of natural selection i have already explained to you what these are purifying selection is elimination of deleterious mutations mutations that are not uh, conferring any advantage for individuals of a population okay now positive right purifying also you can say negative selection negative because negative attributes or negative traits are removed so you know gene pool is purified that is why it's purifying positive normally darwinian selections are all positive okay positive favors advantageous mutations so mutations that are conferring some advantage for the uh, differential survival and reproduction of a species those are preserved in the population okay so positive selection favors advantageous mutation is that clear to you right now it could be of two types one is directional selection that is the in strict speaking the darwinian selection directional okay so tends uh, towards fixation of an advantageous allele if some new allele is forming in a population for example in finches a new allele that is small beak that can break uh, tough uh, nuts for example those kind of alleles are forming those are preserved in the population over the time that is what you call it as uh, you know directional selection is that clear now balancing selection is maintenance of polymorphism that i explained to you with an example of hemoglobin right so this polymorphism is maintained by balancing selection and both these forms are types of natural selection clear so here you can see here mutation creates a variation right of course there are two variants of this uh, uh, you know this one and two okay variants of wild type these are mutants right these two mutations out of which one mutation is not given to uh, uh, these are eliminated immediately in the second filial while the, the next one unfavorable mutations are selected against this selected against this unfavorable let it be the skin color for example okay so if it is white skin color it's easy to spot by uh, birds of the prey okay so if it's an insect for example now black is a favorable mutation because it it confers some advantage for the survival of those species that insect 
if it's black color it camouflages so it can escape from the birds of prey okay so now in this in this sort of uh, mutations so reproduction and mutation occur and in many generations that uh, you know that allele or that variant is or that mutation is fixed in a population the clear that is what this natural selection is so in this case of neutral evolution evolution is mostly stochastic and undirectional in finite populations that's very important in the finite population not the infinite population mostly populations are finite only right so in the finite populations with an uh, with a effective population size okay so evolution is mostly stochastic stochastic means random like mutations are random evolution is acting upon the mutations right so uh, evolution is stochastic and undirectional in finite population so here in this case types of uh, selection purifying selection is elimination of deleterious mutation while positive is both of these are directional okay so while this is uh, the real direction while this is also balancing selection so this Darwinian selection is a kind of you can say it is directional selection while purifying selection is not directional it simply purifies it if something comes up bad points comes up for example white uh, skin color of uh, insect comes up which is bad for the survival of that species the white color that mutants are removed from the population that is called purifying selection right this sort of selections are very common okay purifying selections are very common while positive selections are very very uncommon that is what the neutral theory says as per the modeling mathematical modeling okay so evolution is mostly stochastic that means purifying selections are a lot higher than directional selection is that clear to you so well in this case it's very simple example uh, you know uh, well it is uh, this example is to say the importance of finite population it's not infinite right so especially the population size is very less as we have seen that in evolutionary sciences uh, you know for the genetic drift to take place the, again the same thing population have to be finite and population size have to be much lower especially during the bottlenecks this genetic drift is happening so same case for the neutral evolution as well so well you know in the garden of eden adam steve and eve right eve can choose either adam or steve that means choose in the sense marry right in indian context okay so adam is double a homozygote while steve is small a a homozygote you can say it is recessive one is dominant right so eve is heterozygote capital a small a heterozygote right now of course eve will marry one of these men okay so percentage of a and a alleles in the population forever depends on very heavily on which she choose to mate okay if it is adam of course adam is double a positive right or a a capital a a in that case then 75 percentage of dominant alleles and only 25 percentage of recessive alleles but in the case of steve it's going to have you know 75 percentage of recessive allele while to only 25 percent of the dominant allele right it depends extremely with which she chooses to mate and if she chooses both okay so in that case then what will happen nothing will happen right it's it's maintained that is polymorphism is maintained right uh, polygamy right now as per this Moto Kimura in 1968 of course it's not just Kimura's work Ota that is the Kimura's teacher Ota first postulated then Kimura expanded to make it a, a complete theory then independently conceived by King and uh, uh, you know Jukes Jukes and King but of course Jukes and King's proposal was in 1969 while Kimura is in 1968 okay so what he observed with the genome sequences what he was looking is looking at the genome okay so looking at these sequences and counting synonymous and non synonymous mutations of course it is totally uh, relates to uh, discovery of codon and degeneracy of the triplet codon right so most of the synonymous mutations are neutral that is what he observed 
and of course that is uh, uh, common sense only what he observed is that most of the mutations are synonymous that's a very important thing non synonymous mutations are quite rare mostly these are synonymous that is amino acid non changing right amino acid conserving mutations and now most of the synonymous are neutral of course right to do with the degeneracy of triplet coda is that clear to you that is very much related to the degeneracy which has been discovered only very recently in the moto kimura's time while there are some exceptions in the no, uh, synonymous mutations that is giving some fixation ability uh, that is some uh, uh, selective pressure on the synonymous mutation how could it be that influencing you know rna right small interfering rna secondary structure so in those cases though these are synonymous amino acid non changing well in the case of uh, si rna there is no amino acid there it's only rna sequences but in any case if you say triplet codon as a codon okay so of course uh, it is not translated to amino acid in, in the case of rna molecule though the changes causes some uh, you know of course those synonymous changes in a theoretical fashion though the changes are synonymous it could influence the secondary structure of the rna right and the secondary structure of si rna you know very well that it, it is very important very pertinent for gene expression but right? if the secondary structure changes this si rna can no longer be able to bind to the genes where it is supposed to bind and control the expression of those genes right then that genes are hampered for example these mutations uh, do not cause this si rna to bind so these genes are over expressed so that ultimately translates to fixation of those genes and sometimes si rna mutations can uh, confer this si rna to bind to another gene and these the other genes expression is now controlled uh, or suppressed and that genes are eliminated from a population is that clear now uh, you know differential usage of particular trna so there are several trnas so some trnas are of course trna means codons coding for particular amino acid so some are differentially used some for example prokaryotes and eukaryotes they have differential trna usage okay so for prokaryotes certain trnas are used while for example four trna code for leucine out of this four trna trna means four codons right each codon means each trna and out of this four codons only one codon is predominantly used in the case of prokaryote while the another one is predominantly used in the case of eukaryote so this differential usage can also be conferred by the change in the secondary structure of the trna this just exemption exceptions okay then synonymous mutations are fixed in a population through stochastic event called genetic drift is that clear so how the synonymous mutations are fixed in a population by the genetic drift because otherwise natural selection do not happen for the synonymous uh, mutations natural selection happens for non synonymous mutations okay while most of the non synonymous mutations arise through the natural selection as i just explained non synonymous means amino acid changing and uh, resultant of the natural selection while synonymous are not through the natural selection but through yes. genetic drift okay so most of the non synonymous mutations are purifying in the previous slide i said what this one is right purifying selection is elimination of deleterious mutations so this is very common or this is very ubiquitous than positive selection which is very uncommon okay that is what the moto kimura observed and then he found this kind of neutral evolution is a theory very clear to you theory of neutral evolution so now you compare these two theories darwinian uh, selection and kimura's neutralism what is that purifying selection or elimination of deleterious mutations is ubiquitous that means it's very common purifying selection is a lot more common and above all synonymous mutations are a lot more common than non synonymous okay positive that is darwinian selection it could be of fixation of advantageous mutation that is deterministic selection including directional selection and balancing selections are quite rare so darwinian selections are very rare 
clear this confers only to the non synonymous right now purifying selection is the norm this is statement by austin hughes that is uh, this statement uh, in summary that is uh, that means that this kimura's neutralism is not against darwin's naturalism both are important but darwin's selectionism is very rare but that rarity is very important okay what did he said purifying selection is a norm in the evolution of protein coding genes so most of these mutations are purified especially for protein coding not especially for only for right otherwise it is not purifying there is no such non synonymous mutation for non coding regions positive selection is a relative rarity right it's extremely rare in fact but it's of great interest precisely because it represents a departure from the norm departure from the commonness everything is more mostly it is uh, you know uh, synonymous right non synonymous are quite rare so that is very interesting and among the non synonymous purifying is very common but darwinian is extremely rare so that's why it's very interesting clear and uh, coming to this effective population size fixation through natural selection or genetic drift is depend upon the effective population size i explained to you this term ne effective population size depends upon number of offspring producing fertile members of the population not the all population as such right only the fertile member when ne varies over multiple generations okay for in an island for example there are 100 individuals out of which 60 are fertile okay and then after 100 years it becomes 80 are uh, any becomes 80 and suddenly after some uh, an episode of plague that size becomes only 10 okay any is only let's say 6 though the total population is 10 10 individuals and ne is effective population size is only 6 means there are 6 individuals those are offspring producing then again after many many uh, uh, hundreds of years then the population becomes 150 so in that case in the if you if you look at different different generations just after the episode of plague ne becomes very low right six so that is a limiting factor there. so right the limiting factor here is uh, the smallest ne of any particular generation so that translates exactly into the phenomenon of population bottlenecks okay especially after the calamities then it becomes very low catastrophes affecting genetic diversity genetic bottlenecks so those those time then it becomes quite low and that is the uh, the time when uh, this kind of either genetic drift or neutral theory is a lot more important right so stochastic fluctuation in allele frequency fluctuation in allele frequency due to random sampling of gametes from generation to generation of population okay random sampling means it just take like just random okay different different alleles are there out of which or the variations are there randomly selected like a, a box with a, a number of different uh, balls different colored ball and your uh, 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 you know you uh, blind person is taking one ball out of it or two balls out of it okay so it is absolutely random right so that is what this genetic drift is when uh, again this is also explained to you smaller than any larger the effect of stochastic events is that clear this sort of things happens a lot more often when the effective population size is very low okay so mutation rate will be predominantly determined by genetic drift during genetic bottlenecks especially during the calamities right so continuing that one stochastic fixation of mutations why genetic drift is the most important driving force behind substitutions that is the main postulate of kimura's neutral theory of natural selection okay uh, molecular evolution okay then uh, effective population size is generally too small for any population right uh, in comparison with the magnitude of positive selective pressure acting upon it so positive selective pressure is the magnitude is very high comparing with the ne ne is quite low 
and that is why neutral theory is what happens everywhere that is what the motto motto's conclusion and darwinian selections are extremely rare when the ne has to be quite high right for the darwinian selection to take place right and non synonymous mutations if at all forms are quickly removed from the population because most of these non synonymous if it is uh, uh, you know of course the uh, uh, you know amino acid changing right whatever this be these are removed from the population so these are something called purifying selection you know it is that clear to you now how do you measure selection so it's very important thing so to measure selection in uh, uh, for example a set of dna sequences i give you and you have to measure is it positively selected neutral or negatively selected to measure it you have to examine synonymous versus non synonymous changes so you have to see a proportion of synonymous and non synonymous or it's a kind of ratio of number of synonymous mutations and number of non synonymous mutations so uh, if they are synonymous we assume they are selectively neutral you know it right if it's synonymous that is amino acid non changing there is no selection there so if it is non synonymous it is subjected to natural selection which could be negative or purifying or it could be positive right positive uh, natural selection that means advantageous mutations are selected in i explained to you with the example of the black variety of insect in a population right so you have to align this in order to uh, examine the rates what we have to do is to align these protein sequences if it's a protein you are working with the protein sequence you have to align these sequences for example hemoglobin right align these protein sequences and then use this alignment to align the dna codon sequences looking at the protein alignment you can align the dna okay codon sequences there is a reverse strategy not just by the dna then protein no. first you look at the protein especially the conserved domains okay and that is used to refine the dna alignment right so count the number of synonymous and non synonymous changes very simple simply count it is this the position number 1 is it is it synonymous or non synonymous okay then count total possible number of synonymous and non synonymous changes so number of synonymous and non synonymous and you are also counting total possible number of synonymous and non synonymous so this is some kind of chi square analysis isn't it have you studied chi square in your last thing so you are looking at the po total possible number and the total number that ratio you are taking it so it's a absolutely it's a chi square analysis only well there are several ways and one way is something called nay gojobori method okay so you can actually use this paml pamel for that one you can perform it in the this website you can have a look there i'm going to link that website here okay so here in this case there are two orthologs you know what these orthologs are right these are genes separated by speciation events while the other one is what is it called gene separated by what is it paralogous what are those genes duplication huh gene duplication yes that is what the paralogs are right orthologs are separated by speciation events and of course you are looking at the orthologs for phylogenetics if it is paralogous then entire phylogenetics is wrong okay now these are two genes right the same gene orthologous genes that means genes in could be of different species or different genus now you see here a a a and a a g both are coding for lysine right so of course even this mute there is a mutation here on the third position and this mutation you know this is synonymous mutation because the amino acid is non changing and now look at here the first position it is a a g a a a changes to g a a the first position is changes a to g and which is non synonymous because uh, you know g a a codes for g l u right gluten right glucine glutamine yeah glutamine so you can say this is a non synonymous mutation here while this one is synonymous right 
Uh, and now look at here the, the next codon C A G and C G C. In this case, there are two mutations here, right? Second position and third position. Now looking at here, how do you calculate here? So there are two ways C A G to C G C. Of course, these are mutated sequentially. So sequential mutation could be of two different paths, right? So C A G to C G C. First path C A G to C A C. The first one is changer. G to C. Okay. Histidine, right? Then C A C to C G C. The second one is changed. Arginine. Is that clear? So this this is the first one. First path. In this path, there are two non-synonymous substitutions. Is that clear? The first one is non-synonymous because it's lysine to histidine then histidine to arginine both are non synonymous now here look at here in this case uh, the first one is lysine to arginine right it's non synonymous you know now arginine to arginine again that is non synonymous synonymous which one yeah it is synonymous yeah, arginine to arginine is synonymous so in this case the there are one non synonymous first one is non synonymous and the second one is synonymous right so it is one synonymous one non synonymous in this path and in this path it is two non synonymous now you you count a total number of there are three non synonymous and one synonymous out of two path so now you have to take an average of it because it's two path three non synonymous and one synonymous divided by two right so that's going to be 1.5 non synonymous and 0 0.5 synonymous is that clear yes. so that is what in this case CAG to CGC it is 1.5 non synonymous and 0.5 synonymous clear so uh, for total possible changes if you want to calculate this total possible change for a chi square analysis right consider all nine possible single base changes for each codon for example CAG okay this is one codon here and there are a number of ways the CAG can be changed okay out of which TAG is a stop codon that we are not taking there in in case TAG forms and of course that translation terminate prematurely right so we are not taking the stop codon there and of which the other codon there are nine possible ways and out of nine ways eight ways are non synonymous and only one way CAA is synonymous is that clear so and then if you want to say the proportion of synonymous is 1 divided by 8 and then what is the proportion of non synonymous 2 uh, that is 8 uh, 7 divided by 8 right and the ninth one is of course the stop code on here right and uh, that is going to be 0 0.125 is the proportion of synonymous changes in the, in this this example okay so if you want to calculate the total possible synonymous mutation for a particular codon this is how to calculate you know ka by ks what is this ks is number of synonymous substitutions and ka is non synonymous substitutions just the number okay so in the previous example just look at here synonymous how many synonymous here 1 then 0.5 that is total is 1.5 and non synonymous it is 1 1.5 that is 2.5 so that is 0 0.6 is ka by ks is that clear so how do you interpret it if it's one neutral mutations will change all bases on an equal rate so mutations are neutral okay so that is what one means that means number of synonymous mutations and number of non synonymous mutations are equal okay and now for the conserved sequences where purifying selection is quite often it will have ka by ks less than 1 ka by ks less than 1 means that uh, you know ka uh, synonymous mutations are higher always non synonymous mutations are lower in our previous case is 0.6 right where you can see here no, synonymous. synonymous mutations are yes. less yes. non synonymous is higher okay uh, that is less than one in the case of purifying selection you are purifying to remove the bad or deleterious mutations right now in the case ka by ks is higher or larger than one 
it's a signature for the positive selection so is that clear so k looking at this k by k as this ratio you can predict is it positive selection neutral selection or negative selection okay so a a changes occur at a faster rate than expected by chance so that is what this one is k by k is higher than one that indicates positive selection right or darwinian selection if you discover some genes and after this analysis this gene is you're saying k by k s is more than one that's a very big deal because that's very rare according to neutral theory of molecular evolution right so uh, that is what k by k s ratio is it's a signature for positive selection which is a relative rarity so finding k by k s higher than one is very big deal okay if you look at one particular gene and different regions of that gene k by k s ratio varies that's very important if you especially especially for in this example it is for the epidemiology okay infection uh, you know uh, molecular genetics so this is particular one uh, particular gene called gp120 glycoprotein 120 that is enveloped protein of hiv1 okay human immunodeficiency virus so you know this virus hiv1 binds with what cd4 cells of t helper cells right so that binding this gp120 this protein is very important for that binding okay and now if you look at this particular hiv1 you know hiv1 sequences are as i told you it is a quasi species you cannot say it's just one species it always changing even in within one particular aids patient you take the genome sequence of hiv1 from different parts of his body and you do an alignment it is not just same it's always different and now if you take some environmental samples that means some uh, you know different haplotype of hiv1 from uh, usa hiv1 from india hiv1 from japan okay different hiv1 and you do an alignment of this one you and you look at on the same gene different portions of the same gene and take out k by k s ratio that will give you an idea where these selections are some regions are selected and some regions are non selected is that clear so where these genes are evolving faster so that is very important hallmark to to know that right so here in this graph this is uh, on the x axis this is sliding window so basically the codon right codon you are sliding 40 codon in this in this diagram is 40 codon i'm going to link this paper okay 40 codon sliding window over the entire span of the gene okay for example here 50 means 50th in the middle codon middle codon is the number 50th of 40 is that clear so that means 20 left 20 right and then you are calculating k by ks of that one that particular codon yeah and then you can see here majority of, of this gene it is less than one so that is as per the kimura always k by k s ratio is less than one most often okay now certain regions you can see a big spike here right one two three four what are these areas these are k by k s is higher than one means what is the meaning of this these are the regions which are constrained by positive selection or Darwinian selection okay or uh, uh, non synonymous are higher than synonymous clear so this area and if you look at this protein secondary structure and then you look at the CD4 lymphocyte structure okay so then you can see this corresponds to the epitopes okay epitopes of the T lymphocyte so wherever this uh, binding pattern of course this is a uh, glycoprotein envelope protein binding to the lymphocyte receptor molecule and these receptor molecules are changing okay because that is of course that is our strategy to uh, you know bind with the evade the infection of this hiv right because otherwise if it's not mutating hiv can easily simply bind it so we have to get away in a strategy not to bind the HIV molecule so that our you know uh, human beings are spared the species is spared by from the HIV infection so you know epitopes are nothing but antigen binding moieties 
okay, of this molecule. So, this epitopes corresponds to uh, these positive selective uh, areas of this gene. Okay, so evolution of HIV is to evade the immune system. Is that clear? That is what the con conclusion of this kind of studies. So, to, to, to do this kind of study, you have to perform K by KS ratio to find is it really under positive, neutral or negative selection. Right? So, you know, phylogenetics often make use of this numerical data, that is numerical taxonomy. Okay? So, which can be the scores for uh, various character states. So, character states could be anatomical, for example, size of femur and you are performing a phylogenetic analysis of uh, uh, mammals, you know, that is morphological data and that is of course, there is a character state for the phylogenetic analysis, okay. Or it could be the DNA sequences, mostly for molecular phylogenetics or DNA or protein or RNA, one RNA sequences, right. So that is what you are using it. Similarities and differences between the organisms can be coded as a set of characters. Is that clear? Character means the differences in the DNA sequence data, right? So in an alignment of DNA sequences, each position is a separate character. Position number 1, 2, 3, 4, right? All these alignment position means that these are columns of a DNA sequence alignment and each position is a character state. So for the morphological, each position in the sense that femur is uh, less than 50, yes or no. So that could be a morphological character state, okay. But in this case, sequence alignment itself is having a numerous character state because each column means one character state each, right, with four possible character states. Four means four different bases in each alignment position, right, four nucleotide. So that is what it is, right. We will uh, uh, continue th this discussion in our next class. Is that clear to you the till now the, all this discussion about uh, uh, you know theory of neural evolution and we have also covered the theory of uh, you know different forms of selection and uh, significance of uh, K by KS ratio, right? Any questions? No questions? Okay then. then.